Hi everyone, welcome so much on this wonderful Friday afternoon. There were some few technical issues there, but we managed to get over them. And can you believe it? Two, us two getting over technical <laughs> issues. It's a miracle. So, <laughs> welcome so much for joining us today. And it's a busy one. So, um, we've got a... <laughs> it's a busy, <laughs> busy one. We've got yeah. a lot to announce. Trust the tech to let us down on one uh, of our busiest streams. But I'd just like to say thank you to the, everyone who has been in the chat room. You've been filling the empty space. So, thank you for that. And hello to everyone who is joining us. Welcome. I can see you're coming in from San Francisco and Amazing. California. And where else do we have here? A few UK people as cool. well, by the looks of things. So, welcome. There is a lot going on today. So, we have, first of all we'll be announcing the Hollywood first time filmmaker winner and then we'll be moving on to the highlights of the week from Los, Los Angeles, Angeles lift off and then we're also announcing the Toronto winners so shall we get started let's get started and say hello to Charlie who is also joining us here today hey. hi Charlie <laughs> how's it going <laughs> so um Charlie's been with us you, you've probably met him before on one of our streams he's been with us since us being an actor in Philophobia the feature film that won at our season awards yes. back in January. So um, yeah, Charlie, you'll be helping us run through. I will, I will, yeah. I've been uh, I've been with you guys for a couple of months now and uh, yeah, of course met at the season awards I think last year, which was absolutely fantastic. Love every um, second since. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, let's kick off then, as Nat said, with the Hollywood First Time Filmmaker Showcase. So this finished on Sunday night, didn't it? Yes. So it finished a week ago now, and then the finalists were sent off to our judges. Yeah, and <laughs> and they got back to us. But I think it's really nice to recap the films that made it through to that to that process. So without further ado, let's kick off with the films. Yeah, uh, Charlie, do you want to run us through the films that were these finalists? Sure, of course. So the finalists are Anniversary by Chanel Angelique, Canners by Michael Borgen and Darren Doyle, mm. and Capo Linnea, The Last Stop, by Roberto Totola. Amazing. We also have Carjack by Michael William, L by Jen Santos, and Exposed by Daisy Dunley. Fantastic. Then it's Flash Frame, directed by Tyler Clifton, Good Counsel, directed by David J. Levine, Limigrato, directed by Sofia Capasso. We also have Malibu Stacy by Crystal Don, One Year Postgrad by Luciana Siracusano, yeah. and Pandemic Love by Griffin Hamilton. And finally then we've got Squashed by Chris Evans, The Boy from the Wild by Peter Meyer, and The Shop Around the Corner film by Heather McGee. Nice. Amazing. So, so I think it is time to reveal the winner. I think so. So, without further ado, did we hand over to you, Charlie? And, and, and the winner the is. Winner Dada. is. Limigrato, directed by Sofia Capasso. Congratulations. Let's find out a little bit more about this film. Yeah. Charlie, do you want to read the logline for of us? Of course. Can ingenuity and sheer determination keep a family alive? Three brothers explore their rural village, gathering and po gathering and poaching food. Their imaginations run wild and escape from the poverty of their upbringing. But this is South Italy, World War II. Some things cannot be dreamt away and nothing will ever be the same for them again, including archive footage and interviews. This film is a powerful snippet into the harsh lives of a generation forced to abandon their childhood and dreams. Yes, congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, a wonderful film. And uh, thank you again to everyone who screened with us. That was three programmes packed with amazing films. It was, films. wasn't it? And you can just see by the variation and the poster designs yes. there and the content that it was a wonderful festival to be a part of. Absolutely. Um, but moving on to part two. Yes, <laughs> part two. So the <laughs> Los Angeles Lift Up Film Festival, it has now been running for not even a week. It went live on Sunday night and Things are going a little bit crazy in the festival, what do you think? With a bang. <laughs> with a bang, 100%. So, it is live from the 13th of September through to the 11th of October. And official selections of the Los Angeles Lift the Film Festivals are invited to screen exclusively with our partners on a Vimeo On Demand. There have been eight different programmes, totalling 717 films. Mm. 
So, lots going on there. And as I just mentioned, hey Rupert, he's just woken up a little bit. <laughs> uh, it's like eight programs. <laughs> Whoa, <What's going on? laughs> Ooh. So, video on demand are our partners for this festival. So, in the de- blah, 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 in the video's description down below, you can find the link and it will direct you straight to all of those eight programs. Amazing. So, if you don't know how to vote, or you haven't started voting yet, watch this video as it will tell you the whole process. And if you do have any questions regarding it, now is your chance to ask us in the chat room and we will do our best to answer any questions that you may have. Okay. Our online festivals are designed to bring much needed new eyes to true indie film. They are a tried and tested method of providing a platform of diverse work to a large audience. The voting process is specifically created to engage people with the collection and provide valuable insights for the filmmakers. Once you purchase the collection, to watch the films you'll be sent a welcome email which will contain your voting link. Before the festival closes, head to the online form to cast your votes. You must select your two favourite films and it is strictly one set of votes per person. Throughout the festival, we'll be running events on our YouTube channel, such as live festival updates, free workshops and promotional filmmaker interviews. Filmmakers will receive daily updates from the festival. Thank you for participating in the Liftoff Film Festival and supporting Indie Film. So there we have it. That is how you get your votes in. And as you've probably been bombarded by Claire uh, with her um, emails, they have been a roundup. So, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> let's start the roundup third, as Matt says. And let's take a look first at our new Voices Features yes. page. Um, now, yeah, so from, there have been 112 viewers from 12 mm-hmm. different countries. Uh, so the films that are currently in the top three positions as of 11 a.m. this morning, uh, UK time, we have Primal on 12 votes, Replicant Timorous on nine votes, and Blurring Man also on nine votes. So we have 43 votes coming in so far, which means that there are lots and lots of people who still haven't voted. And as we mentioned, we're only five or six days into the festival. Absolutely. So um, I will run you through those three films now. So Primal there was in whole position, so that's an American film directed by John Humphreys. A scattered college kid, Arlo, and his frat bro roommate, Blake, try to navigate their hyper-masculine tendencies and their aggression boils over when they end up competing for the same girl. That is a really cool poster. It is. I like that. There we go. So that was in top position as of 11am this morning. Um, Closely followed by Replicant Terminus, directed by Gregory A. N. Coots. A female Blade Runner, Didge, is faced with the perils of executing justice and fighting for the best aspects of humanity in a war-torn world in 2050. Oh, we're a bit close to the bone in some ways right now. (laughs) (laughs) Humanity is now under the control of a one-world government order, Mind of Terror while the GMC world military is having a difficult time controlling the human rebel groups that have formed, terror is breached regularly by replicants, keeping the Blade Runners at the office of replicant safety very busy. Mm. And that poster definitely looks action-packed. It does, yeah. (laughs) And then finally on this page, Blurring Man, directed by Matthew Bowman. When day labourer hero from El Salvador, Elmer's harrowing desert trek into the United States across the Sonoran Desert extends to the legendary experience festival, Burning Man, Elmer finds himself at the centre of an allegory for American privilege and excess. As the film progresses, corporate lawyers and shadowy ICE agents threaten to seize not only the film, but so much more. Boom. That poster just makes you want to go... (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Nice. Um, So that was our new voices features. So they're moving on then to new voices shorts one. So there are two programs within the shorts Mm -hmm. um, and new new voices category. But this one specifically, we've had 138 viewers from 15 countries, 63 votes in total as of 11 a.m. BST, so UK time, 18th of September. And those films are Bunkers on 17 votes, 
Matatonia episode one and two on eight boats mm -hmm. and Phoenix on seven boats. Amazing. Um, Charlie, do you want to run us through the synopsis for these films? Of course. Yep. So, Bunkers, directed by Ollie Han Anderson, after finding an ancient golf course in the jungles of San Francisco, the worst golfer of the year, Starlo <laughs> von Sourdough, <Sa> <laughs> <laughs> discovers he can recover the treasure of eternal life during the COVID-19 global pandemic. But first, he's got to learn the rules of golf, and in particular, bunkers. Amazing. And I can see we've got Ollie in the chat here, so um, <laughs> congratulations from, for currently leading the way, and what a poster. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Ollie. thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> Amazing. Then we have Metanoia. Episodes 1 and 2, directed by Gabrielle Roiblin. A new LGBTQ web series confronting personal and sexual identity in a college environment. Emma, a junior in college, is exploring her sexuality after her boyfriend transfers schools, ending their relationship. And a new girl catches her eye. And then finally we have Phoenix, directed by Chantal Rochester. When two women fall in love in 1770, their love comes to a tragic end which binds them to that room in parallel times. Hmm. Nice. Fantastic. So, Shorts 2. So yes, Shorts 2. 115 viewers from 12 countries, 48 votes so far. So like the other programmes, there's lots of opportunities to get your votes. And I mean, you've still got a lot of time to as well. So these films will often move around a lot. Yeah. Um, so the resistance is on 13 votes. Here to nowhere, um, here to nowhere is on six votes. Rainbow Trout is on five votes, and the Ashura on five votes. Amazing. So the resistance, an American film directed by Valencia Kelly. The civilized world dangles on its last thread before descending into total chaos from the rise of the new world order. Armed with the knowledge of her husband, Dr. Jacob Martyr's creation and his mission, Ziri Martyr picks up the mantle to not only avenge his untimely demise, but to forge a more humane world. Mm. Then we've got Here to Nowhere, directed by N.K. Keller. Two sisters, Viv and Louise, grieve the one-year anniversary of their parents' death. When Viv suspects Louise of infidelity with her partner, leading to a personal discovery of loss and identity. Then we have Rainbow Trout, a British film, directed by Ben Probert. Mm -hmm. Dave and Kimberly, a couple on the verge of separation, experience a very strange evening together. Doesn't give much away, no. I like that. <laughs> I'm hooked on that one, I want to see that. And finally we have The Erasure, directed by Akila Blair. This thriller film is sort of like The Purge, and for one weekend out of the year, black women and girls go missing. This fictional film is inspired from a real statistic that 64,000 black and brown women and girls go missing in the US every year and only a fraction of their cases are investigated. The rules for the Erasure Weekend is that there cannot be any police involvement or media coverage of the missing women. In this world, there is a safe haven, a neighborhood known as Frontier Hills. This year, the audience goes on a journey with three black women that live in this safe haven and shows what happens to them when the Confederate goes beyond their boundaries to capture them. Mm. Wow. What a statistic as well. Yeah. That's mm. insane. Um, so, yeah, there we go. That was Shorts 2, New Voices. So then moving on to Trendsetters Features. So from 43 countries, uh, 43 countries? On 53 viewers from 18 countries and on seven votes. So there is lots of movement going to happen here. So I guess that's good with features, you need your time to watch those. Yeah, you absolutely you do, you absolutely <laughs> do. So The Making of a Man is currently on two votes and Evergreen is also on two votes. Okay. Um, Charlie, do you want to run us through? Of course. Mm. So The Making of a Man, directed by Lo Dagerman. Lo wants to find out what led her father, legendary Swedish writer Stig Dagerman, who died when she was three, to pen a searing, brutal play about toxic masculinity. The play was inspired by people Stig met during the 1947 visit to Paris, a city reeling in the wake of Nazi occupation. 
It follows the chilling trail of a young man bullied for being a coward who searches for a way to become a real man. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. And then we have Evergreen, directed by Paul, mm. Paul Goodman from the United States of America. On his way up north to visit friends, Ben picks up a mutual acquaintance, Sam, from her apartment in the city. Instead of taking the interstate, they both agree for the longer but more scenic coastal highway, exploring and developing a companionship. Upon reaching San Francisco later that evening, the two decide, decide to divorce destinations from conclusion and get back to their car to find out just how far the Pacific Coast Highway will take them. Along the route, they wind through weathered towns, giant forests, state lines, and the realization that the further they go, the closer they become, and those forces that kept them looking back are being left far behind. Mm -hmm. Sounds beautiful. Yeah, it does, and so is the poster. Yeah. So now we move on to our shorts programs. The Trendsetter Shorts won 123 viewers from eight countries and currently on 71 votes. Mm -hmm. So Sam and Emma is on 17 votes, Dumps on 12 votes, and Taipei Jesus on 10 votes. Amazing. Do we want to read these or no? No. <laughs> so we've got Sam and Emma, directed by <laughs> Vanessa Lee. When their love wanes after a miscarriage, two heartbroken women try to piece together their relationship, highlighting the hardship and dysfunction that can arise from trauma and grief. Hmm. Then we have Dumps. Directed by Boris Billick. A depressed man becomes mysteriously and inexplicably stuck to his toilet before he is able to commit suicide via toaster in the bathtub. <laughs> Amazing. It's, it's obviously a good comedy. <laughs> Lots of <laughs> twists and turns in that bloodline. <laughs> I love this stylized poster. I'm actually going to well. go and watch this one as soon as we finish <laughs> the stream. That's fantastic. That sounds like a, a fun watch for a Friday afternoon. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> And then Taipei Jesus, directed by John Redlinger. Washed up writer Roy Frankel sees his dreams dashed when three boneheaded Hollywood executives hijack his biblical adaptation, The Gospel of Matthew, and turn it into an edgier, holy reboot called Taipei Jesus. Notions of religion, <laughs> race, gender and art all collide in a blistering, not so satire, that culminates in the trailer for Taipei Jesus. <laughs> Authentic here have just um, commented saying they really enjoy Taipei Jesus. Very funny. Great. I'm Maybe so there's another one we need to watch these. this Friday afternoon. Definitely. Um, so that was Shorts 1. So Trendsetter Shorts 2. So 72 viewers from 12 countries and currently on 24 votes. The Jungle of Accounting on 4 votes and South Down 79 on 4 votes. Amazing. Over to you, Charlie. Okay, so The Jungle of Accounting, directed by Chase Pearson, Charles and Marion Bailey, the proud owners of a small accounting firm, reflect on the absurd yet true stories of their assistants from the 1980s. South Down, 79, directed by Matthew Price, with a lifelong mm -hmm. friendship coming to a devastating end, an unhinged Jay and sentine sentimental Boone take a run-down car on a road trip to try and figure out what went wrong. Great image as well. Yeah, really great. Uh, there's just a comment that's come through here about um, two films that so he's curious to know why two of the vote, two thirds of the votes for his film Blurring Man and Primal were deleted overnight. We both had around 30 votes last night, and now there's much less. So that will be because that's votes that have not followed the correct voting procedure. Um, so this is stated on the online voting form that you must select two votes. Uh, we do this to try and keep the process as fair as possible. Um, so that will be one reason. And then secondly, it, you must be either a filmmaker who signed up with your comps ticket or somebody who has rented the festival to actually watch the films. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, that will be why. So moving on to Trendsetter Shorts 3, we've got 93 reviews from 12 countries and are currently on 41 votes. So Persuasive on 15 votes, Something About Bubbles on 7 votes and The American Dream on 6 votes. Amazing. So on 15 votes then, Persuasive, uh, directed by Jay Wright Award. 
after a tragic event, an African American woman decides to join the police force. Mm. Then, Something About Bubbles, directed by Mark Chen. Something About Bubbles is an original political satire comedy series following two liberal filmmakers as they attempt to make The Bubble Project, a documentary exploring the issues that divide our country. An American film there. And then The American Dream, directed by Baldav Sandhu. Three immigrants about to cross the border sit around a fire and discuss what the American dream means to them. And then Trendsetter Short Sports. So 81 viewers from 16 countries and currently on 22 votes. So Encore is on four votes and in 12 hours it's on three. Amazing. Uh, Charlie. Perfect. So Encore is directed by Maria Rosaria Cretti from Italy. How many stories could a hotel room tell? <laughs> Have you ever thought about it? Encore was born from all the emotions contained in a room. Then we have In 12 Hours, directed by Jared Khan, a young man's spiritual journey through a series of events that happen in 12 hours. Nice. Amazing. So, then moving on to the prizes. There are lots of different prizes up for grabs, including two screenings at um, the Los Angeles Film Festival in 2021. But there are also a handful of season award nominations up for grabs as well. And this is where this stuff I feel really comes into its own. It's it's like our mini Oscars and it always takes place here at Prima Studios. The red carpet gets laid, the bubbles get poured, and Charlie was there last year and now he's working with us. So that could happen to you too. But the Lift of Season Awards, we have 14 different categories from Best Short Live Action Narrative, Best Short Documentary, Best Actor, Best Acting Ensemble, Best Art Direction, Best Cinematography, Best Screenplay, Best First Time Film, Best Post Production, Best Music Video, Best Animation, Best Director, Best Feature Live Action Narrative, and Best Feature Documentary. So lots and lots of categories, and we will be giving out a handful of more nominations from the Los Angeles Lift Up Film Festival this year. Absolutely. And as I mentioned, from the collection, two of those films will get screenings at Los Angeles Lift Up Film Festival next year. But to begin with, audience choice and jury selections from each of the programmes um, will migrate onto the network round. From there, selected winners will receive live screenings. So yes, there are two rounds to this festival. We also have an Audience Choice Award where we invite the films that receive the most votes to join us here on YouTube Live, where te hopefully there'll be no technical issues. <laughs> um, and we'll talk about your films and we'll go through a director's commentary and just find out a little bit more about the process of making a film and where it's going and where you want to go as a filmmaker. I absolutely love those streams. They're yeah. definitely one of my favourites. And any tech issues, we just overcome them. <laughs> Easy. Easy. <Yes. laughs> tech wizards over here. <laughs> um, so that was Los Angeles um, and the first voting roundup. Um, I saw we had a question there from Ollie though, just before we move oh. on to Toronto, um, regarding the first round and the, that last until this Sunday. Um, but actually, so the first round is the entire month on Vimeo On Demand. So everybody has the full four weeks to decide their two favourite films. And it's after that that the audience choice and jury choices will go through to the network round. Yeah, and that network round lasts for roughly two weeks. And then we announce the winners, just like we're going to do here now yeah. for the Toronto Lift Up Film Festival. Yeah, so for everyone in Los Angeles, this is a sneak preview of what's to come for you. Essentially, exactly that. Um, oh. Well, in that case, let's go through Toronto. Yes. Dun, dun, dun. <gasps> so we're, we're just going to recap the films that did make it through to that network round. So, um, yes. I Am an Iraqi Jew by Lindsay McLean. Kidney by Brent Tarrera. McLaren by Marianne Serrari and Caligala Dreams by <laughs> a long list. <laughs> a long list of people. Congratulations to that team, though. Uh, Daniel Hedstrom, Apelia. Uh, you so, might need so, to jump in. Yeah, on this sorry, guys. No, really that's bad weird. Yeah, we've got some Swedish names that we're not so used to. So we've got yeah, Daniel Hedstrom, Apollonia Melody. <laughs> sorry, Sophie Anderson, Astrid Anderson, album. 
So congratulations to all of you on Emerging Talent Shorts. And there are posters. Amazing. Lots of nice. different colours there. Um, and then on Innovators Shorts, uh, we had Avernus, direct by Simon Ross. Stay Hidden, direct by James Owen. Strictly for the Birds by Tess Edgenstein. Card of Farewell by Christian Holmgrad. And Loose Ends by Brendan Ross. Uh, and here are their posters. Looking fabulous. Uh, Charlie, do you want to run us through Pioneer's Shorts? Sure, so then we have a cat tail directed by Phil Scopacci from the United States of America. My Name is John Artis by Ruzba Tamjidi. Inhale, directed by Brian Chambers and Fully Involved, directed by Kyle Kula. Amazing. And those are the posters. And uh, there's just a few comments here from Dennis Film. We'll take those all on board and see what we can do to clarify the process 100%. Um, and yeah, I agree it's not cool to throw people's votes out if they didn't know they had to vote for two to begin with. We'll try and make that clearer. Yeah, and anyone that anyone is welcome to obviously go through the online form again and select two films. So if they know they only voted for one, do you just ask them to fill out that form again and of course then the vote will count. Yeah. But um, but we have to keep everything fair, so we can't just have people voting for one film. Okay. So Trent says his feature here, Nobody Famous by Elizabeth Olsen from the USA, Delaria, Six Years of Search Sanity by Lisa Dunn, Sock Ice Salmon and Red Fish by Dimitri Skelethnok and Vladislav Gorishin mm -hmm. from Russia. <laughs> oh, there's so many really fun names today. <laughs> and thanks by Gabrielle De Luca in Italy. Mm -hmm. Go. So. Ah, this is the exciting bit. Sorry, Ben. Cool. And the winners are. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> so, congratulations, McLaren by Marina. Sorry. Sorry, by Marion Zare, yes. um, who wins a screening at Toronto next year. Yes, she does. So, a family of four live in a wrecking yard in Iran, suburban of Tehran. Mother and father both work at the same yard, dismantling and wrecking old cars. The two kids, a 12-year-old boy Nima and a four-year-old girl Tara, spend their time playing around the yard and especially in an old, empty car which they've painted and decorated for themselves. Both kids are interested in driving and F1 races. Tara mispronouncing McLaren F1 team, McLaren. Um, learning this from their dad, who is a big fan of the sport. So they spend most of their days practicing imagined driving in the playing car. Supporting her little blind sister, Nima is always behind the wheel, explaining the imaginary outside view for Tara, and at the same time making car sounds and noises as if it really is moving. This is such a heartfelt film. It was one of the top to watch. I, I have to say, I absolutely love this film. Yeah. It was really beautiful. Yeah, I mean, it just looks stunning. Everything about it, isn't it? All, yeah. all the judges, Every, everything. Plus, all audience members who watched this film, I think, just fell in love with it. So, well done, Miriam. Well done. Yeah. But that's it. Right. There is another winner as well. So, Inhale by directed by Brian Chalmers. Um, well, another another film that came back so so strong yeah. from the jury and the audience as well. So Inhale documents the emotional journey of the Chappell family and how their daughter struggles with cystic fibrosis have helped them to live in the moment. Again, like I said, it's so again, both of these films are very heartfelt and genuine. Yeah. So Amazing. congratulations to the both of you. Well, you'll be screening with us at Toronto Lift Up Film Festival in 2021. Fingers crossed there's a vaccine by then. There will be, there will be. <laughs> That, as I mentioned, we've already spoken a little bit about the season awards, but there are, I think, a few films here that are up for nomination. So should we find out who they are? Let's find out. And so we have Sockeye Salmon, Redfish. Uh, so this is nominated for Best Feature Documentary. Again, stunning film. Um, Sockeye, a species of wild salmon, is born in... Kankachan waters and spends its entire life in the Pacific Ocean. Only once does it return to fresh waters to give offspring, start the circle of life and die. It is an inexhaustible resource that feeds billions of people on the planet, restored every year. But soon we might find ourselves facing the unimaginable and humans will exhaust the inexhaustible. 
Mm. Great film. Um, and so pleased to see it amongst our feature doc nominations. Yes. Um, Charlie, do you want to announce our next award, which goes sure. to... Crunch, directed by Liu, Ka Liu Kaidi Peng. This is another film that I really, mm -hmm. really enjoyed. I thought it was fantastic. Crunch is a sci-fi comedy 3D animation. The story starts with the morning of a little short guy named Bob who just started working in the space agency. When watching the spaceship launching, Bob is hit by a mysterious lightning and starts to grow bigger. But there seems no way to stop. <laughs> such, such a charming short film. Yeah. Really enjoyed it. Amazing. Um, so there it was, a Best Animation nomination. And... Da -da -da. Punch it! Uh, so now we've got a nomination for Best Art Direction, um, directed by Perrier Oliver. So Tom, a young skater, roams with its board in an outer urban environment. He penetrates into a carnival close to the public and stops in front of a punch ball in working order. He gets hooked and after several fruitless attempts, typing all of his strengths, then manages to activate the jackpot. <laughs> Um, yeah, a wonderful film with fantastic art direction. There we go. And <laughs> Meg Rowland again. Yeah, so it picks up a nomination for Best Cinematography as well yeah. as winning um, as overall Best Film. So congratulations, Miriam. We'll be sending everyone all of the information um, and we look forward to hopefully meeting you at the Season Awards or we'll be doing something, whatever we can. Yeah. Um, to host that wonderful, wonderful event. Ah, and that is it. That wow. is all of the announcements made today. That was a long list of things, but thank you for everyone who has stuck with us so far. And if you are a filmmaker looking to launch your career, then Liftoff have a professional membership. It's $189 a year. And within that uh, includes free submissions to all of our festivals and showcases. We do tailored career road mapping sessions, so helping you find your route within the industry. And then you can join us here in the audience one day. With one Charlie! Day. With Charlie, as you can so see. That he's not sat on his own over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have a wonderful job, jobs dashboard as well, which gets updated uh, regularly with jobs from all over the world. And then we also do market representations where we try and match your project up with sale agents and distributors and just open those doors for you. So you can find all the information there on liftoff.network forward slash membership. Ah, so thank you so much for watching and the chat room has been buzzing and uh, yes, I, I agree. We will look into the uh, voting system and see if there's anything that we can clarify there as well. Um, thank you so much. Amazing. So what's happening next? What's, what's coming up? So on Monday, we'll be doing our first uh, Los Angeles filmmaker interview. So if anyone is interesting, we'll be going through the people who have commented in the chat and if you are screening as part of um, Los Angeles, we will invite you on here today. Amazing. Look forward to seeing who we're going to speak to. Yes. Cool. Well, I think that is everything. Uh, thank you so much and goodbye from all of us. Yes. Goodbye. <laughs>